Uh, thanks so much for everyone coming. So, yeah, this is uh, the first talk in the two talk series about uh, uh, new direction in dramatization. The next one will be given by Roy Kell. Uh, he's also here in this afternoon. So, oh. so, so, in the, so the plan is the first I will give you an overview about the results and uh, some intuitions, and Roy next will give more proofs. So that's the plan. So, so, so here's the plan for this talk. Oh, it's called today, but it's only for the first talk. Sorry. So first, I will give you some motivate, motivating questions about the the whole talk, and also an overview of the conceptual messages I want you to consider. And then I will go into details, talk about background results and open problems. And the first I will talk about the, the, the work on the finding the right assumptions for generalization. And next I'll talk about super fast generalization for randomized algorithms. And then I will talk about some very recent work. Actually, it's just up on the, it's just made public this morning <laughs> for randomized proof system. And finally, I will talk a, a little bit on the new results in uniform harness versus randomness, depending on whether I have time or not at the end of the talk. <coughs> so let's get started. So de-randomization, uh, as the name suggested, it means that it means the process of converting a randomized algorithm into a deterministic algorithm. And uh, more formally, it's asking something like whether BPP equals P. I think you all know this, but let me just quickly <laughs> remind the terminologies. And uh, besides algorithms, we, are, we also love proofs. And you can ask the same question regarding proof system. So, what, so more formally, you can ask whether the randomized proof system, such as Merlin Arthur, or as the Merlin proof systems can be de-randomized into the deterministic proof system like MP. So these two questions will be the, or the, or the these two questions, or the maybe more fine-grained version of these two questions will be the focus of this, this survey talk. So essentially, we have two motivating questions for the for the whole talk. So the first question is, what is the minimum assumption needed for randomization? Of course, ideally, we would want to get generalization with no assumption. But as you may know, that seems to be very hard. And, we, and currently, we do know that circuit lower bounds suffice. But it's not clear whether circuit lower bounds are necessary. So one interesting question is to figure out what is the minimum assumption for generalization, and then maybe start from there, we can get it down to like uh, no assumption. That's the that's the ultimate hope. The second question is probably <laughs> the more practical one: is that how fast can generalization possibly be? So BPP equals P only means we have a polynomial time simulation, but this polynomial can be you know n to the 100, and that might not be very efficient in the practice. So Inspired by recent work in fine grain complexity, we can ask what is the actual polynomial exponent in the generalization. So these are the two motivating questions for the whole talk. So, so in, in recent work, so with Roy Tell, by introducing a new framework for generalization, we make some progress on both questions, and we'll see in this talk. So let's get into more details about the first question. So let's make a closer look. So ideal, what we, want, we want to get P equals BPP. And what we would love to have is a hardness assumption X, which is both necessary and sufficient for P equals BPP. So if we can have such an assumption, then it means that 
for any other assumption, if assumption y implies p equals p p p, then assumption y also implies x just by the virtue of being an equivalence. So then you can say assumption x is no stronger than any other assumption that implies p equals p p p, and we'll have some very good understanding of what is required to do generalization. So that's uh, that's for the first question. And uh, so in my recent work with Roy Tell, uh, we gave a new dynamization framework <laughs> based on new uniform harness assumptions. So we show, uh, we formulate a new type of uniform harness assumptions that is both necessary and sufficient for generalization. So we have two-way connections between this new type of assumption and the PPP equals P. That's the first thing we want to, I want to cover in, in the overview talk. Oh, by the way, feel free to interrupt me with any questions you may have. And uh, let's take a closer look at the second question. How fast can generation possibly be? So there's, there are several ways to ask this question. So one, standard formulation is thinking about worst case generalization. You can ask, let's say I give you a reasonable time bound t of n, say like n to the 2 or n to the 3 or linear. What is the smallest uh, t, smallest t tilde t such that randomized t of n time is contained in deterministic tilde t of n time or as the merlin t of n time is contained in non-deterministic tilde t of n time. So this is the one, one formulation, one precise formulation of this question. OK, and then I'll just give you a spoiler. <laughs> On the plausible assumptions, you can actually show an overhead of n. So n here is the length of the inputs. So the, the, on the plausible assumption, you can show an overhead of n is both required and sufficient. Uh, I actually mean n to the 1 plus epsilon is sufficient. But uh, yes, you, you, get, you get the point. So given this spoiler, I mean, overhead of n is great, but uh, can we do faster? So we can also ask whether we can, what we can really get if we really don't want to make any overhead. So in this case, we may have to, you know, sacrifice a bit and get in a slightly weaker generalization. So the second question is, can we do better by getting slightly weaker generalization? I'll explain what it means in the next slide. So again, using this new framework we proposed based on new harness assumptions, we can, this, this framework has the nice feature that it's more f flexible and it enables even faster generalization. We can show that assuming new uniform assumptions, we can get results of the form that randomness is indistinguishable from being useless. Uh, I will explain this later in the talk, what it means. But uh, also, this is probably not achievable by using black box PRG. So you have to use some new framework for, for this uh, indistinguishable from useless thing. So, so essentially, <coughs> so in, in my recent work with Roy, we first show that probabilistic t of n time is effectively in t of n time times little sub, -sub polynomial overhead. But effectively, we mean that the generalization works. The, the generalization algorithm may have some wrong inputs. So it, it may make, make a mistake. But the no polynomial time adversary can find those mistakes. So it looks correct with respect to polynomial time observer. And uh, we have the, you know, you know, oh, it's actually not, not upcoming. In our work, we just, it's just public this morning. <laughs> we show that uh, under very strong assumptions, we can make constant round t of n time as a Merlin proof systems effectively in non deterministic t of n time with a sub polynomial overhead. 
And then I'll, I'll explain what it means uh, later in the talk. So is there a question? Yes, what's the question? DJ, in this results, TFN, should we think of it as polynomial in N, or does it work for exponential TFN too? Oh, you mean adversary? Uh, T of N. T of N. Oh, does it have to be polynomial? Or uh, it, it depends on the assumption. I mean, when for, I think it works for TFN, TFN even up to sub, sub exponential. But the, the larger the TFN, the stronger the assumption you have to make. I think that's essentially what's happening here. If, uh, when tf n is like when tf n is like put to the n, then an overhead of n is nothing. So it's probably it's probably it probably makes sense to think about tf n as polynomial or like quasi polynomial, because because we yeah that's the more interesting case. Okay, uh, yeah. So I, I'll, I'll explain what it means by indistinguishable later in the talk. So let me also quickly just. Um, a slide to show what's the technical uh, main tools happening in the in the works. So the in the in most of the previous pseudo uh, pseudo work, we construct PRGs or pseudo random pseudo random generators. So a PRG, uh, I think most of you know it, but let me quickly recall it. A PRG. Um, just produce a collection of pseudo random inputs, and this and it, it tries to fool every small circuit, meaning that for the output collection of this PRG, for every small circuit, the probability of C accepting a true random input is close to C accept a random output of the PRG. The important thing to note here is that this PRG C, uh, this PRG G, does not depend on the input circuit C. So you have a, you want to give a single PRG which fools every small circuit. This, this is quite nice, but it's also very strong. So you have to use circuit level bound for this. Another concept formalized by Goldrai, it's uh, very similar to PRG but it has one twist. So now the generator G depends on C. So I'll call it G sub C. So G takes the input circuit C as an input. So G knows the circuit. G then outputs a bunch of four pseudo random inputs R1 to Rm. And the, and the condition now becomes for every small circuit C, you want G sub C to full C. And uh, so essentially, it, it makes sense to see why target PRGs are appealing because now you know the circuit and want to use what you know to get some, you know, to, to make your life easier in terms of generalization. So essentially, all the work I mentioned, most of the work I mentioned in this talk is materializing this intuition of constructing target PRG should be easier than constructing PRGs. Finally, let me quickly show you the, how the new assumptions, how the new unifying assumptions look like. So essentially, we'll be assuming, some, assuming something like that exists an efficient function with multiple output bits. So think about f taking n bits of input and also output n bits of output. So it's, so it's uh, it has multiple output bits. That is hard for n to the c time probabilistic algorithms instead of circuits. So it's a uniform assumption. What precisely efficient and hard means will vary with the result, but that's a general template. Okay. So so let me let's actually get started. So, okay, so now I'll move to the first result. So, recall we really want to have P equals BPP. So let me recall what we know uh, on the previous um, randomization works. So, uh, a very classical line of work shows that 
circuit level bounds such as exponential time is not in sub-exponential size circuits, it's equivalent to uh, PRGs of all log and seed. Such PRGs, such PRGs are sufficient to de-randomize our polynomial time randomized algorithm, but it's not clear whether they are necessary. So maybe the maybe circuit level bound assumptions are too strong. It has been it has been open for two decades whether circuit level bounds or whether circuit level bounds against E is is equivalent to PRGs. And uh, well, the, another line of work starts from weaker lower bound, like a uniform one, x not equal to BPP, for example. So, it, and they, they prove that, uh, they prove that PR, uniform lower bounds is actually equivalent to PRG that work on average. Average case, PR, average case PRG can get you average case generalization, like for every randomized algorithm, that's a polynomial, that's a deterministic algorithm that solve it correctly on most of the inputs. But uh, that is not enough for P equals BPP. You can show actually it's implied by P equals BPP. So maybe the, those uniform lower bounds are too weak because they are not enough for getting the worst case generalization P equals BPP. So as, as you can see, there's something missing in this picture. And that's exactly what I want to talk about. So in this work, we, we give a new type of highness assumption, which seems to fit the theme better by having actually, by actually having two-way connections. Okay, so, oh, any question, Kanda? Uh, okay, so I'll keep going. Uh, just feel, feel free to interrupt me if I'm speaking too, quick, too quickly. Okay, so what's the assumption? So, um, so we assume that there exists a polynomial time function f from n bits to n bits, that is almost all input hard against all n to the 10 time randomized algorithm. Okay, so what do I mean by almost all input hard? It means that for every n to the 10 time randomized algorithm, for all but finitely many inputs x, A cannot compute f. So this is a very strong assumption. It says that this function f is very, very hard. So for every randomized algorithm of running time n to the 10, passing some uh, input length, A fails completely at every input. This seems a quite strong assumption. But, but uh, why we study this is because you can see very easily that if P equals BPP, then this, then this assumption is true. And the proof is very simple. It's just by a simple diagonalization. You, can, you, you actually you are, you are welcome to work it out like a, as a quick, uh, quick exercise. So yeah, so here, Having multiple outputs is very important because otherwise you can, you know, you make an all one algorithm and an all zero algorithm, <laughs> then at least one of them will solve half of the inputs. But if you have multiple outputs, then uh, you can actually show that if P equals PPP, this assumption is true. So, so this means that this almost all input hardness might be the right way to look at for generalization. Uh, any question? Yeah. So this confuses. Why do you think it needs to be almost all? Can't you, if it's finitely many, this was already point that was brought earlier, can't you just hard code those inputs? Uh, oh, it, it has to be almost all. Uh, um, so essentially, what we'll show is that. If this function f is hard on input x, then generalization works on input x. So if it ha it's hard on everywhere, then generalization works everywhere. If you have yeah. a particular value for a particular input, can't you just? Hmm? 
Top codex? I don't know. Oh, yeah. So it's very crucial that the algorithm is uniform. So right, it's, it's against uniform randomized algorithm. So it's not, it's not, it's not against circuits. So you need like n bits to have a wire and output. So the randomized algorithm is uniform. It's it fixed. If it's finitely many points, there is a maximal length. You can just fix, uh, you can just hard code all of them, right? Regardless of their size. For, but you, uh, Maybe I'm missing something. You can only succeed on finitely many inputs. It's the other way around. It's the other way around. Like, if you, you can only succeed yeah. on finitely many inputs. Oh, so for all but finitely many, it means that, yeah. oh my god, I think this, uh, Yeah, I think this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's correct. Uh, so, so he says that for for all but finitely. So okay. so it means that uh, yeah, that exists and and you there. You always do that, but that's the best thing you can do. Okay. Okay. That's just keep going. Then I start offline. Yeah. Yeah, this is something new. So it's 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 good that you. It's uh, it's it's very it's possible that you you are confused. Uh, we will we'll talk. We will talk. So, but uh, sadly, we cannot show the assumption. Prove the assumption is really necessary. But what we can show is that if you add one more twist to its hard function, if you further assume this app is computable by polynomial size, log space, uniform circuits of n square steps. Then you, we can obtain p equals p p p. Okay, so I, I should say what, what I mean by log space uniform circuit of size t. So it just means that there exists a uniform or log space machine that prints the description of the circuit. So I, I should remark that for every polynomial time algorithm that exists a log space uniform polynomial size circuit that is equivalent to the algorithm. So the only restriction is actually the depth. It says the depth should be a fixed polynomial. And the precise constant of you know, 10, 2 is not important. You can change them by 195. The most important thing is there should be some like n to the 5 gap between them. Is this clear? Okay. Uh, feel free to ask me offline if you, if you have <coughs> some, something unclear. So, uh, so the takeaway now is that almost all input hardness is sufficient for generalization. So to summarize, we our main result shows that this uh, assumption, almost, almost all input hard, but with, with like one structural low depth requirement implies P equals PPP. And P equals PPP implies the assumption without the low depth restriction. So, uh, of course, the, we hope you, I mean, the most important open question is to really make it an equivalence. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I'll left it here as an open question. And uh, but the takeaway here is that almost all input hardness is both sufficient and necessary for generalization. So this type of hardness assumption is required. Maybe you can twist it to make it make it equivalent. And uh, okay. So so okay okay. So, so because I. I I talk about many different things, so I actually feel like it's better to talk about open question after one section because otherwise you may just forget things. So forget things. So the first open question with regarding this right assumption stuff is that can we really make it an equivalence? So in other words, can we prove the if the can can we prove promise p equals promise p p? from only almost, almost all input hardness without the depth restriction? I think this is a great open question and uh, 
resolving it may also shed light on many other open questions in complexity in randomization. The second open question is, so we, we are also interested in, in randomization of randomized proof system. So can we do something similar for the randomization of other Merlin? Can we formulate a, or maybe, um, can we formulate a highest assumption that is close or is a characterization of AM equals MP? So this highest assumption may not be like an almost all input like thing, but uh, the, so I think if we can have such an assumption, we'll have better understanding on the generation problem of Arthur Merlin. Uh, I should remark that in, in, in case of, of MA equals MP, that is probably such an assumption. And uh, yeah, but I didn't cover it. OK, so that's the, uh, any question? So I mean, just to clarify, so if you want to go from AM to a simpler version of MA, so it's, well, the previous, it's usually the case that if you de-randomize these, like promise VPP, you get this, right? So in that sense, will your assumption, I guess, also imply AM <coughs> MA oh. equals MP? Uh, no. So. Yes, so if you have P, promise P equals promise PPP, you have MA equals MP, mm -hmm. but not AM equals MP. MA. I mean MA, yeah, for, for MA, yes, so MA equals MP follows from promise P equals promise PPP, but uh, AM is different. Oh. Yeah, AM is different. So, uh, so you, uh, okay. what's the question? Yeah, okay. But for MA equals MP, how do you get the reverse, I mean, um, how do you get the convert? Uh, let's talk about uh, offline. Yeah, so you, you can formulate something different. Yeah. And it's not an equivalence, but it's something morally equivalent. Okay, so um, okay, let's get, go, get, go to the second topic. Oh, yeah, if you have any questions, just feel free to ask me. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, for the, on the last slide, like that ideal equivalence, um, mm. like, uh, Yes. Yeah, so if you could prove that, you would have something like you could boost that lower bound of the bottom from like 10 to like 100, right? If you're able to prove that equivalence, do you know, is there a way to do that? Like, let's say we have a lower bound in P against n to the 10 time probabilistic algorithms. Is there some padding trick to get that up the constant, like to uh, into 100? Uh, you may be up? able to do that, but I don't think you can get all the way to the button, so. Um, what I mean is, like, if the bottom is equivalent to promise P equals promise BPP, yes. then that one implies the bottom thing for all constants, not just n to the 10, right? Yes. So if there was the equivalence, like, you would have, let's say, a lower bound against n to the 10 would imply a lower bound against mm -hmm. arbitrarily yeah. large um, time bounds, right? Uh, let me think about it. Uh, yeah, I think so, yes. And yes. But that by, separately is not known. Um, yeah, you, 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 that's a good question. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I probably need to think about it. So, Lij, can I ask about this thread? It yes. seems like if you had much fewer than n bit in the output, you'd still be able to diagonalize against our machine. Yes, so this n, this n can be replaced by anything little omega 1. Any, any, any super constant will do. Yeah. But, but but that we don't know an equivalence for that either, right? I mean, like, uh, like if you replace n by n to the square root n, like it's not clear that this assumption below is. Uh, uh, I think maybe maybe in that case you can do some padding. Yeah, that's a good question. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think if you have the equivalence, then they're they all equivalent. Yes. And for for a good reason, because they now can all be done by some simple diagonalization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, that's a good question, but I guess. We should uh, yes, move yes. on now. Let's talk about it. It's a very interesting thing to talk about. Yes. OK. So OK, so, uh, so okay, now let's move to the second topic of uh, super fast generalization for randomized algorithm. Uh, so just quickly refresh your memory. So classical works uh, shows that assuming strong circuit lower bounds, which can be formulated as E is hard for 
total epsilon time with total epsilon another vice, which is just circuits. So from such thing, you can get generalization with a huge constant blow up. Uh, the constant is at least seven, depending on which paper, which classical paper, which classical, there are several proofs. But the constant is at least seven. So this is great because we have polynomial generalization. Oh, so by DPT, I mean probabilistic T of n time. And that actually means the promise version. But I don't have space, so I just use BPT. DT means de de deterministic polynomial time. De deterministic time. OK, so it's a, so classical works gives you polynomial generation, but the overhead is not very great. So uh, in a recent breakthrough by uh, Dora Moskowski, Owen Zuckerman, they proved that if you assume two to the n time is hard for merging Arthur two to the one minus epsilon n time with nearly maximum bits of advice. So this, is, this assumption is pretty strong, but uh, the conclusion is also very strong. So if you assume two to the n time is hard for such non-uniform money as a proof system with, with an advice, then, then the generation can get down to quadratic. So that's very significant because from n to the 7 to n to the 2, it, it's a great jump. Although the uh, assumption becomes a bit larger, a bit, a bit stronger. So in a recent, recent work, we managed to um, get a different assumption. We show that if you have a function by total time, I mean that for this language, on n, so on n bit, okay, the choose table of this language on all n bit inputs can be printed together in two to the two n time. So it's like an amortized version of complexity. So if total time two to the two n is hard for non deterministic two to the slightly less than two n with nearly maximum bit of advice, then we also have the quadratic time randomization. Oh, so this is not the main focus of the talk, but uh, you have, if, you have, if you want to know more, know more detail, you can ask me offline. Just, 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 just want to show you like, what we know about the worst case randomization. So later, we showed yes, uh, new, uh, recent work by uh, me and uh, Roy Chow last year showed that if you assume first one-way function exists, one-way function against non-uniform adversary exists, and then you assume two to the kn time is hard for uh, two to the one minus epsilon kn time with near maximum advice. This is quite a strong assumption. Uh, so this k is basically the n to the k here. So if you t to the of n is n to the k, you, 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 you need to assume it for this case. And uh, any question? Okay. So, so now this is even better. Previously, if this is for, if this n, or if this is like n to the time, then it's like n to the twenty. But now it's uh, just an overhead of n, and uh, it's much better for sub-exponential time algorithm because. The running time is two to the n to the epsilon or two to the epsilon n, then overhead of n becomes nothing. But the quadratic is still uh, sens sensible in terms of overhead. And then we also we can we also can in our recent work we can replace this. Okay, so one-way function exists is a crypto assumption. So it, it will be great to replace it with something complexity theoretic. So in recent work we can replace this with another assumption which says total time two to the n is hard for non-uniform merging other time uh, with slightly running time and, and uh, nearly maximum bits of advice. This, this is a very strong assumption. It's even stronger than, than, than the DMOZ one because now it require total time instead of for individual computational time. But it's uh, not a crypto assumption. So it's incomparable to one function exists. This does not imply one function exists, for example. So that's the, that's the picture for 
uh, worst case generalization. So how many minutes do I have? Sorry, what is plus there? Oh, plus just means you, I need these two assumptions together. Oh, you need both of those. Both of those, yeah. Uh, so plus means well, both. So what this, the first paper is one function plus this assumption. The second paper is, well, is this one plus the assumption. So putting together, it's like if one of this holds plus this one, you have this one. So putting them together. So take your pick. So, OK. Hmm? Okay, great, thanks. So, so of course, we really want to get rid of this N, but that's a very, so that's a formal barrier for this. So under something called sharp non-deterministic strong exponential time hypothesis. Okay, I'm, I'm not defining, I'm not, I'm not going to define this, but uh, you're, you're welcome to ask me after talk. So uh, assuming it's quite plausible assumption, let's say the overhead of N is uh, optimal. So of course you can think about it, this as a motivation for getting better generalization because this will refute this N sets. So there are two ways to look at it. But, uh, if this, but it still is kind of a barrier because it seems hard to refute this sharp N sets. So it's a barrier for even faster randomization. So what should we do? Oh, is this? Can I, any, any, uh, who? Uh, no, so the, the intrinsic issue is the hybrid argument. That creates a big loss. Uh, there are also some other loss, but the, due to the hybrid argument, I think n to the four or n to the three is the best you can have. I see. Yeah, just but I guess, uh, but that's only with the, like, the technique of coming from like, assumption, right? Is, is it possible that, that maybe there's a different argument? Uh, very good question. So I'll, I'll come back to this. So that's how, so I think that's, Written paper proving some barrier, but uh, I'll come back to this. Very cool. So the question is how do we overcome this NSETH barrier? Because we really want to have generalization with no overhead. So a lesson from crypto is that two things, if two things are indistinguishable by polynomial time algorithm, then they are practically the same. So maybe we can relax or go and show that maybe randomness is indistinguishable from useless. So actually, generalization, the whole starts by crypto assumption. The first paper assumes one function. But later, it's a kind of like, you know, diverge from crypto, we make our own assumption. But maybe now it's getting back to more crypto ground. <laughs> I don't know. So because we, 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 we want to avoid this unsafe barrier. So the goal here is that for the goal is that for every t of n time randomized language, so for every L computable by randomized t of n time, you want to find a t of n time with algorithm with sub polynomial overhead such that for every polynomial t of n time sampleable distribution, L, uh, t sub L make mistake with negligible probability. So that is, uh, it says that there's no efficient way to find a counter example of your generalization. So this is quite strong and may be very useful in the practice because it's, because I give you the algorithm D sub L, you cannot find a counter, so it looks correct to you because you cannot find a wrong input. So the goal is, uh, any question? Okay, so, so the goal here is to show randomized T of n time is in effective uh, T of n time with a sub-polynomial overhead. This is quite a, oh, what's the question? Sorry, not to interrupt you, but maybe you were about to say that just thinking, this type of algorithm which you cannot find, you know, counterexample yes. efficiently, 
Well, it still implies any known lower bounds that would a uh, simple randomization apply? Uh, oh, can I say that again? What do you mean? Like P equals DPP, yes. you can show that if P equals DPP, then either, uh, what is it, next doesn't have P in P slash poly or R the permanent requires large circuits, right? So will something like that also be implied if P equals in DPP in that sense? Oh, I see. So this is very strong. Yeah, I think this will definitely imply some lower bound because it's a very strong uh, conclusion. So here we are not trying to prove them unconditionally because it's very hard. What we do is we want to, we want to get useful generalization with no overhead from plausible assumption, including those lower bounds, whatever lower bound you want to assume, but we really want to get down the, the overhead. That's the motivation. So I think it definitely implies some lower bounds, of course, yes. Yeah, we're going to talk about what lower bounds, uh, what lower bounds like uh, offline. Okay, so uh, um, let's. So okay, let's uh, state the assumptions. Uh, I, I'll admit it's quite strong, but I think it's just a start, and uh, and uh, it's very interesting to weaken this assumption as a motivation for future work. So first, we assume one if function exists, okay, which is a standard one in crypto. And then we, as we assume that that exists a function f from n bits to n to the epsilon bits, such that first, each, uh, each output along of f of x can be computed in t of n time, given x and i. So each output bit of f can be computed in t of n time. And the next, f is hard to approximately print by t of n times n to the epsilon over 10 time randomized algorithm over all polynomial time sampleable distributions. I should explain what it means by hard to approximately print. So the first, if this is true, then we have the desired uh, conclusion. You can set epsilon to be anything you want. So what do I mean by hard to approximately print with respect to a distribution D? So I mean that for every t of n time, t of n times n to the epsilon, n to the epsilon over 10 times randomized algorithm A over the distribution x, a of x has having distance at least 0 0.1 into the epsilon from f of x with the probability 1 minus negligible. So it means that it's very hard. So a of x, because a, so in, n, in t of n times n to the epsilon time, you can easily print every output of f of x but you are given much lesser time, then it's very hard to even approximate this f of x over all polynomial time sampleable distributions. So that's the assumption. So this is randomness over a as well? Uh, a is randomness. Uh, uh, yes, randomness is over, over both, x both, both x from d and the in internal randomness of, of a. I just don't want to like, write too many things here. But, uh, it's probably equivalent because it's like one minus divisible. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the okay. A any question? Okay, from there. I'll show. I should just go. On. So, so okay. You may you may ask. Okay, why do we need, need such a crazy assumption? Maybe you can just do it with a, black, with a PRG or some black box method. But actually the answer is no. You can, you can easily prove that no PRG can be used to prove an overhead even with n to the one minus epsilon. You can prove, it, it's actually quite an easy proof. You can try to come, it up, come up with it yourself. But the, me the message here is that if I want to have effective generalization with uh, almost no overhead. You need to use something beyond PRG, like a targeted PRG. So only non-black box generalization 
can get super fast generalization. Okay, let me. There are some very interesting open questions, obviously. So the first open question is that we showed we, we, we know that under sharp n sets this overhead of n is optimal, but uh, you know Ryan doesn't believe in n sets, so perhaps we should find some different assumption which can convince the Ryan. You know that's the <laughs> most important question for me because okay, or you just get a better generation and then refute sharp n sets. Ryan will be even more happy, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway. So the next question is, uh, can we further weaken the assumption for the overhead generalization? So currently, we're, we're, we're in a one-way function, which is clearly not clearly too crypto, I guess. And also, we'll need some very total time by the function, which is, seems very strong. But uh, that's a recent work by, by, Shet by Shetan and Viola. They proved that. There's some black box barrier regarding this question. Oh, it's probably in 2020. 20, 20, 20. It's 2022. Right, yeah. Okay, it's 2022. Yeah, sorry. Oh, so they essentially, it's also answered a question about uh, the other Rahu. <laughs> yeah. So, so they prove that, so essentially they prove that uh, you cannot start from harness against E to get this uh, super fast randomization. At least using some black box method. So finally, we would, we, we would love to weaken the harness assumption required for the free lunch generalization. And, the, and the, this is a very interesting question because it seems to be very related to something called correlation intractable hash functions in crypto, which has been studied a lot in recent works on Fire Shamir. So maybe that can be some way to bring more insights from crypto to this particular question. So in some sense, targeted PRG can be seen as a keyless correlation intractable hash function. Any questions? Um, okay. Okay, I'll, I guess I'm also, uh, how no, many? No, you, have, you have time. So. Okay, how many, how much? Six more minutes. Okay, okay, that I probably should, uh, B. Okay, let's see. Okay, so let's get to the generation, super fast generation for randomized proof system. So the classical work, there are a lot of classical work, but the, I think the best one shows that if NE capital NE is hard for not only from non deterministic circuits, then you have uh, Arthur Merlin Chaffin time is contained in non-deterministic Chaffin time with some big constant exponent. Oh, I didn't look carefully what's the lower bound on this three, but uh, yeah, it's probably greater than two or three, I think. So in our recent work, we show that, that under some very strong harness assumption, okay, let's, if you are interested in the let's talk offline. So you can de-randomize as the morning of n time with only an overhead of n. And then moreover, under the same assumption, we can, you can actually derive, okay, sorry. Under the, this same assumption, you can actually derandomize as a morning of n time with c round. So c here means a round, c is a constant. Uh, in T to the T of n to the c by two times n time, and this is optimal. Under again under this sharp n sets, uh, yes. So so under very strong assumptions, we actually have optimal generalization of for as a Merlin time. And it, the most interesting thing is that if you replace Arthur Merlin by Merlin Arthur here, you can show quadratic is actually optimal. So in some sense, Arthur Merlin is actually easier than Merlin Arthur. 
Well, if you, well, actually, this should be the other way around. But in a, in a fine-grained sense, as a model, it's actually easier to de-randomize into non-deterministic time. So that's quite interesting and, and counterintuitive. Because we know MA, MA is inside AM, but it's probably not the other way around. Actually, a question on that point. Yes. I mean, that's interesting what you said, because of what you said. But yes. does it actually imply some kind of uh, fine grained separation between AM and MA? Because the standard textbook proof goes by repetition, right? You yeah. take an MA algorithm, you have to repeat it. So I guess you know this is something that uh, yeah. implies, or, or you or going to mention that, but uh, it's interesting to see if this some, something like this will say you actually have to do it. You actually have uh, you actually have to repeat an MA algorithm to get the to uh, the right AM bound. That's an oracle result. Right? Yeah, I think that's an Watson oracle result. Yes. Yeah, that's an oracle result. But uh, yes, this um, yes this implies something under sharp N sets and uh, this very strong assumption without an oracle. But uh, that's also an oracle result. Yes, showing that M, the quadratic bias from MA to AM is optimal. Here actually it's not quite quadratic. You have this N for N here. Yeah, but uh, you can really care of N like uh, very large and it's N is nothing. Okay, I think I have like five minutes. I don't know. I, 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 Three minutes. Okay. Uh, so, so again, this is a barrier for faster generalization. So what should we do? So again, we can try to do something uh, um, like, so, so now what we want to do is that perhaps we can again do something weaker. Can we obtain a super fast generalization of randomized proof systems into deterministic argument system such that no polynomial time adversary can cheat? So in this sense, uh, we, are, we weaken the requirement, but we open up possibility for faster generalization. So precisely, we'll be considering something called deterministic effective argument system, NARG. So, okay, what's the definition? So, first of all, verify around thin time t. Second, completeness is still true. If x is in L, that should be approved. But uh, the soundness is only computational. So, for every probabilistic, so for every probabilistic polynomial t time adversary p, the, for every large enough n, the probability that p finds an input x and that prove pi such that x is not an instance. x is an, yes, no instance. But v accept is negligible. So it shows that no, polynom no probabilistic polynomial time adversary can come up with a common example of this generalization and prove it. It's important that this adversary is uniform, not non-uniform, because otherwise you can hardwire some, something. And, that, and uh, yes, that's the, uh, okay, let's, let me quickly go through this theorem. So, okay, for every constant C, assume very, very strong assumption. We have a constant run as a merging is contained in non-deterministic effective argument system with the t to the with with the no overhead essentially for every reasonable t and uh, regardless of the number of the rounds as long as it's constant. So the key idea behind this is you apply target PRGs to the current transcript to reduce the randomness and the interaction of the verifier. So just like in Fire Shamir, but uh, yeah, more subtle way. And that's why target TRG is very similar to something called correlation intractable hash functions. Okay, finally, let me quickly show you the final slides. And uh, so under the same hypothesis of the last theorem, we have a very nice application. We can show that for every epsilon, that the verifier gets sub-exponential size formula of m bit input, runs in two to the epsilon n time. And uh, first of all, and the first that exists that two to the epsilon n proof convincing you the correct number of satisfying input of phi. And for every polynomial time, a two to the O n time adversary, P of, P of P cannot find a bad input and a bad proof to convince you something wrong. So V either reject it or 
accept the correct answer. So this verifier runs in only to the absolute time, but can convince yet the correct number of satisfying uh, assignments of a given formula. Okay, I guess I should stop, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll end with the open questions. Oh yeah, okay, okay. Uh, thanks for this question. That's what we're waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, let me let me quickly go through. So so what we prove is that we then prove this. So if that exists a uh, language L computable by log space uniform circuit of to the own size and then uh, sub exponential depth and uh, that is that is hard for randomized to the absolute time of all input lens, then we have uh, RP equals P and uh, on average and the BBP equals P on average. So what's interesting is that this, this class, even with only polynomial depth, contains linear space. So previously it's not known whether linear, if linear space is hard for two to the absolute randomized time, can we get uh, average determination of polynomial time. So now we have something new because and the, the method is rely on the previous work, uh, the non-black box techniques. Yeah. Oh, it's that John work with, uh, also with Ron Rostrom. Okay, I should uh, show his face here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Ah, that's a question. So uh, you, you mentioned when you were talking about uh, effective de-randomization of algorithms that you'd like to weaken the assumption. Yes. Uh, do, you, do you have any candidates for what a weaker assumption might be there? Uh, very good question. So yeah, I'm not sure. Any, any interesting crypto assumption? I mean, LWE or some strong, uh, some strong variant of LWE or yeah, I think um, it, it's a great question, and uh, currently I'm not sure what should be the best format of this assumption, but it's uh, the let's talk offline. Okay. okay. Um, there was so you, you said something about making randomness out of the input instead of out of thin air. Yes. Uh, there was a really nice paper of Kain von Melkebeek and Schaltel that does this sort of thing where they, they also got average case derandomizations, um, I think in a similar but weaker setting to you. They, they require circuit lower bound. Yeah, the one sh yeah they okay, they require circuit lower bounds, but are your techniques at all similar, or? Uh, I think it's entirely different. Um, um, they rely on something called seed, seed extending mm -hmm. PRGs, and uh, I guess we still use NW, but in a very different way. Okay, cool. Yeah.